May I have a show of hands? How many of you heard about precision medicine? Sadly, say that only one. But do you know how many of you heard about Barack Obama? Everyone. Okay. For information, precision medicine, a medicine initiative was initiated by Barack Obama in 2015. But how many of us really understand this precision medicine? And how does this approach? actually help mankind and contribute to many of the patients. We know that precision medicine is a mouthful. Okay? According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, precision medicine is an approach for protecting health and treating diseases, taking into account a person's genetics, surrounding, lifestyles, and also their environment. So now, this particular intervention actually takes into account of genes and also their environment compared to the conventional approach, which is one size that fits all. So if you look at the, the chart here, many reports have mentioned that with the conventional approach, that one size fits all, it only benefits 20% of the population. Where else, if we stratify the population based on their genetic makeup, then you were able to see that this population then will benefit from different kinds of treatment that are tailoring to their particular genetic makeup. So, to elaborate more on this precision medicine, I will take cancer as an example. So why cancer? Cancer is a very complex disease, and it can cause by many factors such as environment, lifestyle, genetics, infectious agents such as HPV, and also epigenetics. That's why precision medicine is the best approaches for these typical complex diseases. So we know that cancer is the second most deadliest uh, diseases in the world, right? And if you look at this uh, cartoon here, so if you look at cancer, we always realize that it's only the changes of the surface, that what we can see only the lump. But did you know that there is underlying cause apart from the other's environment, your race or your history, there are also something beneath these cancer cells. That's what we call gene that control the progressions of these cancers and also that it will determine what type of treatment that is designed for this particular cancer. So we now know that each of these cancer cells actually control by a specific gene. And this gene is none other than your own gene that actually mutated. So the word mutation here refers to an alteration of the gene sequences that caused by radiation, environment, and also surrounding, and also chemicals. So if you look at the chart here, so mutation on the particular sequences can cascade it down and affect the translation of amino acids and also the end product. So if you look at the word here, I use this as an analogy. I have a cat. This is not proofreading. If you look at it, if you just change a letter, so it means the meaning change. Similarly to our own gene, even a single letter change in a specific area of that particular gene is actually drive the cells to behave differently. So now, our body not only covers by only one segment of gene, million of it. So can you imagine? So many records or data shown that if we detect this mutation earlier, before the disease progression, there are about 70% survival as compared to late stage. 
And many of us know that if you detect the cancer late, then it will spread. So it is not about what type of uh, treatment it does, but it depends on how sensitive an approach to actually detect this cancer. We all understand that, maybe it's a jargon, so we understand that there are many modalities available to actually look into these cancers, namely mammography, gastroendoscopy, low-dose CT, all these techniques in only looking at the surfaces of the cancers. But what that this modalities means is all those unknown cases that are caused by the gene beneath these cancer cells. So now, in the field of molecular diagnostics, what we need or what do we look is the particular changes I mentioned, the mutation. But this is not only the area that we cover. But we, know, we also look into the details of how sensitive an approach that can detect as low as a single gene that is mutated in the cells. So thanks to the interventions of uh, biomedical scientists and all these engineers, there are a lot of these sophisticated tools such as next gene sequencing, digital PCRs, name it so many, that actually help us to detect these particular cells at the genetic level. So now, just to rephrase, that the precision medicines is not a traditional approach. It is a multi-modalities or multi-concepts um, multi which integrated the genes, the treatment, target treatment, and also the cells. And what most interesting now, in the very near future, you will see they will incorporate the immune, which is your combat system in your body. So, uh, when you look at molecular approaches, especially the diagnostics, just now we realized that through these molecular approaches, we can define and identify these mutated genes where it's located. Because of the advancement of these techniques, previously we classified or the clinician classified cancer based on a particular site, which is breast cancer, liver cancer, kidney cancer, but with the advancement of the molecular diagnostics, now the approach allows the clinicians to redefine and reclassify this particular cancer based on the particular uh, mutation, such as listed on my left. So with this particular mutation now, and thanks to the scientists that have developed a certain compounds or certain drugs to address this particular mutation. So let's look at the particular normal cell, how it's actually derived to become cancerous, and subsequent how that this particular treatment confer a resistance on these particular cancer cells. So we, we realize that in normal cells, undergoing the carcinogenesis due to mutation, the tumors will form. Okay, so now, just now, I highlighted that there are some treatments to address the mutation, correct? So the mutation will address and will treat these tumours. However, in this lump of tumours, there are some portion of the cells will mutate again to confer resistance. These are all cells that need to survive, is the evolution. So some of these cells remain, will undergo certain resistant mutation. And what next? That these mutated cells will flare off, become another resistant tumors. But what the drugs available now, you will see that there are many generations of drugs, targeted therapy, not to address the initial tumors, but also the resistant tumors. Thanks to the molecular diagnostic approaches, you can then differentiate the initial tumour to the one resistant. So this is not something that is in the story, but it is something that's available. So you can see that there are many drugs available to address this type of alteration. 
and you will see that the next slide, there are many ongoing improved generations of drugs to address this resistant mutation or resistant cells. So if you look at the current modalities where you just look at the cells alone, you won't be able to see that the cell's mutation or the gene. However, with molecular diagnostic, you need to take out the cells and then digest and get the DNA and subsequently detect the mutation. And of course, with that, you'll be able to treat the particular cancer. So, because of the advancement of the molecular diagnostics, now it is not that um, it is, has been incorporated into the normal schematic journeys of a patient. You will see that here, the molecular diagnosis now, looking at the gene segment, will assist the clinicians to make that decision upon a particular treatment, and also it is used as for disease progression monitoring. So, again, thanks to the development of the equipment and the sensitivity, just now I mentioned about one particular site detection. So now there is a lot of modalities thanks to like next gene sequencing. You'll be able to see that at one time, you'll be able to see different mutations at different cells at one time. So what benefits here, the patient will pay less. And most importantly now, the patient will can see what the particular cells have mutated and where does this mutation or the gene goes into different side of the particular uh, organs. So, I have prepared a particular video to show you that it is not... Um, this particular precision medicine is not something high but it is true not only happens in the US or the Western. We have our very own patients who actually benefit from this treatment. My name is Linda Boyles. I'm 87 years old. I like to listen to a lot of music. I also love gardening and I'm a very active member of the church. Basically, I'm having a very interesting life. End of uh, 2015, I was sent to go to have a CT scan. And when the result came out, they thought I was suffering from tuberculosis because of my uh, black spots in my lungs. So again, they wheeled me in uh, to have a second uh, X-ray as well. And I waited for a week, and then it was confirmed that I have a cancer. Everybody was shocked. They wouldn't believe that I have this sickness in me. My first diagnosis, Professor Lam put me on this drug called Erixa and I was very, very happy with it because the cancer marker uh, was 200 something, is down to 76 or something, I can't remember the figure. And then later on, when I went for CT scan again, it went up again. So, Professor says, well, this drug is not suitable for you anymore. So he took my blood test. It was very kind of him. He put him a lot of trouble for my case and he sent my blood to Hong Kong. I took this new drug since April and I was so happy to hear that from my blood test for the cancer marker. And I took only two months of it and it came down to 17.9, which was very, very good. It, my stool seems to be normal again and also that um, the crumbs in my nose that has stopped also and the pimples in my head has also gone and I'm very very happy I that this drug is really doing good for me and I'm very happy that everybody who looks at me say I don't look like a cancer patient. The doctor should give explain to them what the drug should do for them. This is a very good example for them and just by explaining to them the drug is doing so good to this patient, why don't you have a uh, try on this new drug and see? Don't think so much and so get so depressed about the sickness. Positive thinking is very important.
So, precision medicine is not a particular talking about drug. It is a multi-dimensional concept. It is about the drug, the diagnosis, and also the intervention. So thanks to the development of all these molecular diagnostics, now patients enjoy a pain-free approaches using just the blood. You'll be able to see a certain molecular diagnostic of the changes of these cancer cells. The area that I research is focusing on identifying these biomarkers and also some small switches that control the mutations and also the progressions of cancer. As a molecular biologist, I also serve to the hospital to identify the certain techniques which are sensitive, approved and good enough to identify and screen all this cancer. So spread your words that precision medicines is not a type, it's a reality. And with that, prevention is better than cure. But some of us may overinterpret this mutation. So in line with the team of TEDx Kanga, that body, mind and soul, that body is what that the molecular diagnostics can detect. The mind is what decision that you make. And wrong decision that actually leads to your souls, which is rest in peace. Thank you.